Hello everyone! I want to spend this video talking about religion and its role in the left-wing thought, left-wing movements, uh, left-wing ideology. Um, before I get started, I just want to say thank you everyone for their response. Um, for your, I guess I should speak in the second person response to uh, my previous video. I have decided, based on the response, I'm going to take a couple more break days from my main show and instead do a couple of these uh, videos. People like the format. I like the format. Let's do it. So, once again, I wrote down some bullet points uh, that we're going to be discussing today about religion. Um, and its role in left-wing thought, philosophy, organizing, so on and so forth. Um, and uh, before we get started, we have to, f of course, identify what the issue is. Um, what are we dealing with? What are the demographics? What's the playing field? So, according to Gallup, which is a polling institute. You can believe or not believe in polls. Personally, I'm skeptical of polls. I think polls in general, uh, and I'm not talking about Polish people, of which I am one quarter of, but polls in general, I feel like I'm skeptical of, right? So I, I talk about polls a lot, but at the end of the day, I'm open to the conversation that polls are inaccurate um, to some degree. That said, 81 percent of Americans believe in God. So, whether or not you have a criticism of polls, how polls work, how do you explain the fact that, according to Gallup, 81% of Americans believe in God, right? 63% of them are Christian, specifically, so... Uh, that leaves about 20% that are, I guess, Jewish, non-denominational, or Muslim, or one of the other ones. And an important stat that I also found in the same survey, which blew my fucking mind. Now, again, I already know this, right? But it, just every time I see it, it blows my mind. Now, again, open to the conversation that polls somehow, for some reason, aren't as accurate as we think. That said... 42% of Americans believe that God not only exists, but hears, listens to, and sometimes answers their prayers. So, God is real, 81%. Half of the Godheads believe that God is not only real, but actively involved in our lives? <sighs> wow. Wow. Okay. That's all I've got to say on that one. So, before I get started on one of my major critiques of religion, I just want to say that my position on the fact of uh, whether or not God exists is it is very clear that God does not exist. That said, I am open to the idea that there is some sort of creator. I'm open to the idea, as both see most atheists are. I'm open to the idea. I personally think that the simulation theory is a more accurate um, theory than the Christian theory. That's just my opinion. Now, I don't believe in the simulation theory. And even if I did, that doesn't answer the question on who is their God. But fundamentally, I don't believe that there is a God. Because what is God? We can have a creator, but God as a word implies worship, implies hierarchy, which I do not support. So, even if there was a creator, and even if the Christian creator was the real one, I would still not worship him or call him God because I don't believe in hierarchies. I don't accept or 
care about authority. So that's my position, personal position on the matter. Um, but my largest critique of religion, and I live in the United States. We live in a Christian, theocratic, fascist nation in this country. And so I'm going to spend the bulk of this talking about Christianity. But uh, this also applies to other religions. Um, and that is that religion inherently, in my view, has one purpose. Maybe two, but both of them really ultimately are one. Religion is a sex cult. That's what it is. I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings, but it is a truthful observation. 300,000 kids identified in the country of France were to have been molested, raped, or otherwise groomed by the Catholic Church over the last 20 years. This is in France. Not worldwide. This is in France. There have been a plethora of stories coming out of the United States where an Illinois church network raped 2,000 kids. And what they would do is they would shuffle the church leaders, the pastors, the priests. I don't know what the fuck they're called. Who cares? They're all the same thing. They're all the manager position. You hate your manager at Wendy's. You should hate your manager at church. Okay. That's their position. They would shuffle them around. They rape a little kid. They rape five kids. They rape ten kids. Uh-oh. The organizers of the cult found out. They're not going to turn them into the authorities, of course. They're just going to send them to another church. And they found out that in the state of Illinois, they had this church uh, like shuffling, this priest shuffling program where they would just, every five years or so, they would just switch it was uh, you know it's like those reality tv shows where you swap uh you know f husbands or whatever the fuck right um that's what they would do and then they would go to other uh institutions other cities other towns and rape more children so a little fucked up you have um islam of course islam is they worship a prophet who rapes little children that is like, imagine if Jesus, <laughs> like part of the Bible, there's an ark, if you will, calling it an ark. There's an ark where Jesus goes around and just rapes a bunch of kids. Imagine worshiping Jesus. Well, that's what the Muslims do with Muhammad. So I just want to say religion is a sex cult, fundamentally. Um, but how do you achieve a successful sex cult? Well... Power is how you achieve a sex cult. How do you uh, manage to groom children into believing that raping them is acceptable? God's plan! It's all part of God's plan. And the parents are responsible for this too. And this goes into the good Christians. And this brings us back into the left. Why would the left support religion? Because they're weak. The reason to support a religion as a leftist is because you are unprincipled and you are weak and you're afraid to talk about what's actually going on. So again, from a young age, parents groom their children into believing that God is real. Some of them groom their children into believing God is listening to you or angels are watching over you and Jesus is watching you jerk off. That's what some, most parents in this country, a significant majority, probably well over 70 or 80 percent. I mean, 81 percent of people believe in God. So I'd imagine um, that all of those parents are grooming their kids into believing in God, too. But of course, there's there's varying degrees. Uh, you can groom your kids into believing in God, but that God doesn't actively watch you, right? There's all kinds of varying degrees. But ultimately, when you groom your child into accepting something that is fundamentally untrue, it destroys their brain. Children do not have an independent objective view of the world of reality they don't know they're children they're kids right and so this is something i've said before but i personally believe that the two parent family unit is inherently abusive i think that 100 percent of the time you have two parents in a household it is abusive 100 percent. that may seem radical um and that is not necessarily blaming the parents but it is my opinion I believe it takes a village 
to raise a child, that is to say, a society to raise a child. No person should have so much amount of power that they are able to craft their child's entire perception of reality. That should not be allowed in society at all. And so what happens is parents, they have kids, they like to narcissistically mold them into little versions of mini-me's, right? And they teach them Santa Claus, haha, just a joke. God, though, he's real. And he's watching you. So remember that. <laughs> and then they send you off to Sunday school, where, again, if you live in Illinois or France or literally anywhere that still hasn't yet been documented, you're probably going to be molested or raped by a priest and not have the tools necessary to properly understand what's happening. This is a messenger from God. God loves you. If God loves you and a messenger from God is traumatizing you and you don't have an independent perception of the world, that's abuse. That's abuse, right? So now again, this is a little bit of a tangent here. I'm a little rambly. I, it's hard for me to stay concise. But the power imbalance. Now, again, I'm a leftist. Maybe. I don't know. I'm an anarchist. I believe anarchism is at the furthest left wing end of the left spectrum. Left right spectrum. If you want to use right a two point timeline, a, a line, you know, graph. Anarchism, in my estimation, is the furthest left possible position. And as an anarchist, I don't believe in hierarchy. So I don't believe in parents. I don't believe in the power that parents have over the kids. I don't believe in parental rights. I also don't believe that, you know, schools should have that authority either. But that's a whole separate conversation. Maybe I'll talk about that in a different video. But religion and the family unit are fundamentally linked. The family unit and religion are symbiotic parasites. They leech, and they steal, and they destroy by helping each other in the process. Parents want to retain their tyrannical control on children, and oftentimes they weaponize the church to do so. The church wants to have a fresh pipeline of young children to rape and molest, so it's a deal that they made, parents and the church. That's a deal that they made, so the power... If you have a critique of power, a critique of power as a concept, you cannot support religion. It's impossible. You cannot be religion, uh, religious and support the abolition of hierarchies. You cannot do it. Um, and this brings me back to, again, why does the left in the United States of America tolerate religion? Why? Well, everyone's just allowed to have their own opinion, right? In America, we are in a very individualistic society. There is no such a thing as consensus in this country. And people are afraid to challenge structures of power. And... When people are less afraid to challenge power structures, you see this often in right-wingers. Right-wingers will say the deep state, the deep state, but that's as far as they go. Capitalism, that's fine. This, you know, cops, they're great, but it's the deep state. There's some nefarious, nebulous thing that's happening that it's some powerful force that I'm against. Right? That would be, if you were to make a meme out of this, that would be the pea brain category. But then you have so-called left-wingers who say capitalism is bad and we don't like it. But, you know, the U.S. government's fine. The two-person family unit is fine. Schools are fine. Police are fine. These are liberals, right? Capitalism is fine. So, uh, you know, we critique power. We critique capitalism, but we still participate in it. We still buy a bunch of useless garbage. We still, uh, you know, eat a bunch of processed and junk food that kills us, the food industry. That's a whole separate topic. So people can say they're against capitalism. And now I'm not trying to do the meme here where it's like, you know, you don't like capitalism, yet you participate. But 
that shouldn't give you a blanket excuse to do whatever you want and to act like a capitalist and then bust out the meme. Oh yeah, I just spent $5,000 on fucking garbage, plastic consumable trash. But it's, it's okay, because we live in capitalism, but I critique it. These are people that lie to themselves. Politics is a brand for them. They lie to themselves about what they believe. They're not really against capitalism. They're against capitalism as a branding exercise because truly they are still enslaved. They are still enslaved by the concept of hierarchy and power. And this leads me even further to you see a lot of very staunch anti-capitalists, people that genuinely despise capitalism and try to have their best uh, to avoid overspending people, you know, people that don't have cars, people that, uh, you know, purchase electric, um, you know, instead of gasoline powered equipment like lawnmowers, people that do all this kinds of stuff. They actually try to put their money where their mouth is. And I respect that. But they still, they find it hard. Oh, we can't criticize religion because it's going to turn people off. It's going to turn people off. We can't tell the emperor that he has no clothes on. Because if we do, the emperor will kill us. That sounds like you're talking from a position of weakness to me. Now, as a matter of fact, there is no God. There is no Jesus. It's a scam. It's a cult. It's a money laundering scheme. If you can't see past that at this point in time in the year 2023 i'm not talking about people in 1963 i'm not talking about people in 1863 i'm not talking about people in 1763 i'm talking about people in 2023 okay if you with the access of the internet books research science if you can't figure out that it's a scam you're just a dumb motherfucker okay but in this country we tolerate dumb motherfuckers and we have a mantra that i mentioned earlier such as everyone has an opinion everyone's allowed to have an opinion well a lot of good that that has done us over the years letting everyone have an opinion <laughs> look at climate change everyone's allowed to have an opinion right you see leftists talk about this oh you you can't debate you can't have a vaccine scientist debate robert kennedy why because you're not allowed to have an opinion on vaccines. Now, we say this in a country where 84% of Americans refuse vaccines. More people refuse vaccines in the United States than believe in God. So, <laughs> yikes, right? But, you know, you see this often on the left. That we shouldn't debate flat earthers because it gives them undue credence. Yet, when you talk about God or Jesus, they whimper. They turn into shriveled little prunes. Oh my God! Well, um, uh, if uh, if 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 uh, you know, if uh, if someone wants an opinion, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to, um, you know, it might turn them off if uh, if if we die, you know, really? So you're talking a big game. Capitalism's evil. Root of all evil. Money's the root of all evil. Politicians are bad. Cops are bad. But God, all of a sudden, gets a special carve out. Yeah, I disagree. But where this is all going to is if you believe in God, fundamentally, in my opinion, and I'm willing to debate this, if anyone wants to debate this, I know I have a lot of Christians that watch me, I have a lot of Christians that I respect. There's a lot of people that are Christian that I respect. I like their takes, okay? But this is some fucking crazy shit, okay? When you believe in God, when you believe in Jesus, when you are open to magical thinking, you are open to dissociation. That's what it ultimately is. Dissociation. Look it up. Look with that word up. I'm not going to define it for you. Um, it'll take too long to describe it. But dissociation by belief in religious uh, ideologies. God, Jesus, Muhammad, all this other stupid shit. I mean, look at what's going on in Israel, by the way. Shout outs to the Jewish faith. But... um. When you fundamentally dissociate from the world's real problems, can you really be motivated to change anything in the world? If God has a plan, why bother? You want universal health care? Well, why? 
if you die without universal health care because you couldn't see a doctor, hey, that's not committing suicide. I know the Bible condemns suicide, right? So, shouldn't you support universal health care? If you truly believe that God is real and that the Bible has any value whatsoever, you're a Christian. I'm talking to the Christians here. I'm not talking about the people that are deists. They believe in the concept of a creator, but it's abstract. I consider myself maybe possibly a deist you know like again possibly you know i'm open to the idea but christianity i'm sorry it's debunked if you are a christian you are stupid you are a dumb motherfucker if you're a deist you believe you're an agnostic which i have my own criticism of agnosticism i'll save that for another video that's a whole separate conversation if you are a christian you are dumb in some category you could be really smart in math or science and still be a dumb motherfucker in every other category because of your belief in God. It holds you back. And I know it's unpopular for me to say this. But it does. It holds you back. If you fundamentally believe that there is a life after death, why would you fight for anything in our current life? Now, again, you're going to see a lot of cope. Copium, if you will. A Zoomer phrase I've picked up recently. I like it. Of people that say, I believe in God. I have a personal relationship with Jesus. You do? Really? I mean, 7 billion, 8 billion motherfuckers out there and Jesus is giving you like a fucking one-to-one -one conversation. Really? I mean, hey. <laughs> That's good for you. But I think you should check yourself into a psych ward personally. Now, again, this is a coping mechanism. People that were groomed, raised to be Christians... They're in a family structure, and again, this goes back to why I think the family unit is inherently problematic. They're pressured. They're bred, groomed, and pressured into belief in God. And they may have, like, oh, I don't like the church. But Jesus, we have a personal... I don't like... You ever see these guys? I, you know, the church is bad, man. I'm not a Catholic, man. Those guys are crazy. But, you know, Jesus and I, we go way back. You ever see that? People that go, you know... These are the good Christians. They call themselves that. No, we talk about how bad the church is. By the way, everything the church is founded on, totally true. Yeah, there is a God. Yeah, and you should worship him. Totally true. But the church, though, I mean, you know, they did some bad stuff, so we can't support them. But God, though, he's totally real. When you are a good Christian, so-called, you enable the church's power. Why? Because you demotivate the population from doing anything about it. When you pretend that there is a special carve-out for religious ideology, you are enabling the church to exist. Religion must be opposed. Full stop. No questions. Religion. Well, okay. I'm down to answer questions. <laughs> Full stop, though. Religion must be opposed. Magical thinking must be opposed. The Zoomers aren't going to vote away fascism in the same way that climate change is not going to suddenly reverse in the same way that there is no life after death. And when you believe in magical thinking, you are fundamentally demotivated. And this is the crux of this video. This is the crux. Is, can you really be an activist for left-wing goals while also tolerating Again, the equivalent of flat earthers, the equivalent of ch climate change denialists. If someone doesn't believe in climate change, what do we do? We educate them. If someone believes capitalism is, isn't all bad, what do we do? We educate them. It's like a bug flying around. If someone doesn't understand how police brutality is, is awful and how policing is corrupt and racist, what do we do? We educate them. If someone believes that God is going to save them and there's life after death, so this life doesn't really matter, what do we do? We tell them that that's okay and you're welcome in our club anyway. We dilute our beliefs for the sake of a big tent and that's the same problem that the Democratic Party has. It's a big ten. You're allowed to have Nazis and fascists, TERFs, racists in the Democratic Party because it's a big ten. We support everyone. Everyone has a right to an opinion. 
So again, how can we effectively organize if we are afraid of this topic? I'm going to be talking about religion a lot more in my show. If that's not something you like, I apologize. But I've got one last plank for this video, and I will be making more follow-ups to this one. And I will be making more of these kinds of videos, I think, for the next couple of days. Uh, just general. This is not news-related. It's just general um, philosophy, if you want to call it that. If you, if you would be so kind as to allow my pretentiousness uh, to foster for a moment. But what is the root what is the biggest problem with religion everything i've mentioned religion fundamentally what it is it's a control mechanism it's a power mechanism it's a sex cult but what it does that to me is so i guess dastardly is the the best word i can come up with is that religion destroys your consciousness Religion erodes your self-awareness. Religion erodes your mindfulness, your ability to be in the present, your ability to participate in a real world on an individual fundamental level. Now, I've said this before on my show, I don't believe that most people are conscious. I don't. I don't believe that most people are actually alive in a philosophical sense. They're alive in a biological sense, of course. But are you really alive fundamentally in here? If you spend your whole life believing in things that are fundamentally not true, instead of having a relationship with yourself, you have a relationship with God. You know these people that... Jesus and me go way back. Yeah, I have Jesus on speed dial. That's not Jesus. That's you. That's you. That is what is a part of you. That is inside of you. That is called your consciousness. That is not Jesus. Some people, in their minds, let's say if you lost a parent. I lost a parent. My mom. Sometimes, I'll talk to her in my dreams. Or maybe just I'll be laying in bed and I'll create a scene in my mind that allows me to talk to my mother. But I'm not actually talking to my mother. I don't believe that she's really in the spirit realm talking back to me. It's a version of her that exists in my mind. It's a simulation inside of here. Inside of my brain. That allows me to talk to her in a way that can be cathartic in my own way. Doesn't change the fact that she's dead. Doesn't change the fact that I haven't talked to her in God knows how long now, five, six years. But sometimes I still say hello. Now, I say hello knowing that she's not real, knowing that she's not responding. But I say hello as a mental exercise because I control what's in here. This is under my control. I am a conscious human. When people believe in God, when people believe in these power structures, Jesus is watching them jerk off, don't make mistakes because God is watching. What that does is it destroys their sense of self from a young age. From a young age, they are taught to, when, even when they're alone, no one is watching them. But Jesus is watching you. Don't jerk off, little Timmy. Because Jesus is going to be disappointed for some reason. I don't. And fundamentally, this is my biggest problem with religion. Can we really have. Can we really call someone woke if they believe in God? Think about it. We see this word often used woke. Woke. Woke this, woke that, woke, woke, woke. Can you really be woke if you believe in God? I say no. That's my opinion. Now, I hope that I came across decently. I'm, you know, I'm a little rambly. This is a little bit of a new format for me, I suppose. If you have any questions, I'm smiling right now. If you have any questions, um, 
feel free to let me know. I uh, don't mind debating this subject. I don't mind talking about this subject. Uh, maybe I'll make a more... Uh, if you have any questions, maybe I'll do a follow-up uh, talking about questions that people have. But once again, fundamentally, there is no such thing as a good question. It's a myth. People tell themselves that to make themselves feel better. It's a lie. People lie to themselves. And you're allowed to lie to yourself. I'm not saying it should be illegal to lie to everyone around you, to lie to yourself. I'm not saying that should be illegal. But if we, and by we, I mean people that believe in an equal society where everybody is equal. If you believe that, you cannot believe in God. I'm sorry, it is fundamentally an opposition. If you look historically, historically, I know a lot of people are afraid of history. They don't like history. They don't read history. They don't know what happened 10 years ago. They don't know what happened 100 years ago. People are dumb. Well, when you look through history, you will find out religion is one of the greatest villains of all time. Now, there have been religious movements that have been liberatory in their own sense. There have been religious people that have done great things throughout history. But once again, that was all in a different world. People don't understand history. People don't understand time. Time flows in one direction. When something is discovered, it does not echo into the past. When ease of information such as vis-a-vis -vis the internet, libraries even, when ease of information combined with wealth of information, I just dropped my pen on the floor, are at such an all-time high in our society, there is no excuse to have a personal relationship with Jesus. You need to grow up. And I say this to myself as someone who suffers from PTSD. I need to get over it. I need to heal. I need to get better. And the only way to do that is through awareness, recognize what my issues are, write them down, what are my triggers, what upsets me, and work on them individually, one by one, and put the pieces back together. And if you are religious, I believe you should be doing the same thing. The first step is awareness. Who are you without God in your life? Are you anybody? Is God a fundamental part of you or is God just a background thing you don't think about? I don't know. One more side ramble before I quit here uh, for the day. Is uh, religion is part of the script. The script, the societal script Go to church, get married, have kids, repeat the cycles of trauma and abuse. Rinse, repeat. Religion is part of the script. Religion has always been part of the script. Religion is the fundamental control mechanism that they use. And I'm sorry, but I don't give a shit about how cringy Sam Harris is. I don't care. Religion is fucking garbage. Christianity is trash. Grow up. And start healing. It all starts with awareness. Once you know that you've been lied to. Once you understand. That you were lied to. It's not your fault. That you were lied to. You were born. In a society of liars. You were born into a cult. We all were in this country. The American cult. It's okay to be a liar to be lied to as long as you're willing to make a change you can lie to yourself for only so long you can lie to others for only so long I fundamentally believe that if people can make the step to healing themselves we're all traumatized we all have PTSD in some way it's more debilitating in some people than in others. We're all groomed into believing lies in some fashion, whether it be Santa Claus, whether it be the free market, whether it be that the government cares about us. 
whether it be that our parents have our best interest in mind, whether it be that our schools are here to teach us things, we all believe the police are our friends, firefighter, you know, let's not mention firefighters, they're okay, I guess. Some of them, you know, I have a critique of firefighting, but that's a whole different thing. Um, we're supposed to believe this stuff. And if you can figure out that cops are bad, and you're still stuck on the God question, I think you should do some more research. I really do. I think people should be always learning. Always, always, every day. And I'm not saying that doesn't mean you can't have fun. I mean, first of all, I believe that learning is fun, but you should learn something new every day about yourself just by being alive. Waking up in the morning, going about your day. When you have alone time, think about the world. What do you believe? Who are you? Who are you? And what do you believe as a person? And until people do this, I don't know how useful we can have a left-wing movement or organization. How can we have that when the people a part of this organization are asleep at the wheel? They're asleep at the wheel, fundamentally, and that's why I believe all left-wing organizations fail and crumble. It's because the people that are involved in them are asleep at the wheel. Now, that's a different story for a different day, my opinion on that, but fundamentally, I believe that you should learn about yourself, learn about your story, your past, your history. Where did you learn things? Where did you come up with God? Who taught you about that? When did you first have your conversation with God? What part of your brain, of your unprocessed trauma, is manifesting in God? Like I said, sometimes I talk to my mom. She's dead. She's not real. But I talk to her anyway because it helps me. I'm not saying that you can't have something that helps you in life. But really, you're going to let that be a money laundering scheme? Really? You're going to let a money laundering scheme, quote unquote, help you? That's really your plan? I'd rather accept somebody who has an imaginary friend than who believes in Jesus Christ.